Hello, everyone. We'll give everyone a minute to come in here. Uh, so we got people slowly filing in. Um, so yeah, so we'll jump in on this soon. If you guys have any questions about anything, let me know. Um, and we will certainly do our best to answer them. So we're going to walking through kind of email marketing today. Um, so let me just jump in, start sharing my screen as people kind of file in here. To move all the Zoom stuff. All right, well, while we're waiting, let me just hit play here. Of course, now it freezes up. Love that for me. Um, if you can just let me know if sound is good, screen sharing is good while we're waiting, that would be fantastic. It's good. Sweet. It's what I like to hear. All right. Um, Again, we'll give everyone about one minute, and then we'll jump right in because might as well reward those who showed up right on time. Um, so out of curiosity, and I know a lot of you responded to the initial email when you registered, and I appreciate that. Um, how much email marketing do you guys do? If you could let me know in the chat, like let's say in a given month, how many times does your database hear from you? This could be newsletters, other emails, different things like that. But if you had to roughly say on average, how many times a month? Maybe once, once a month, four or five times once. Sounds good. Once or twice. Looking to go to twice a month. I'm going to encourage you to do so much more. Um, we'll get into that. Actually, there's a good joke in internet marketing, which kind of sums up my thought, which is only send emails on days you want to make money, um, which I think I actually put in the promo for this email. Um, so we're going to get in and we're going to basically jump through and walk you through the playbook. Now, what I want your goal to be today is to take at first, maybe like list out your top three things in order from one, two, three, and implement the first one and don't go to number two until the first one's done, especially with email. There's so many different routes and things to try and to do and see what works that if you try to do all of it at once, then you're going to have problems. Um, so we find that pick one, two or three things, and then we'll go from there. So we're going to jump in today. Um, a quick note on tools that you can use. Uh, this is one that just a lot of people overthink. Um, don't worry too much. Like, yes, there's some deliverability difference from like a MailChimp to a less known provider. There can be minor things like that. Um, most people get too caught up in what tools they're using. Like if you have like a lot of our clients who use follow up boss, we just do a follow up boss and MailChimp and the follow up boss take care of the initial stuff. MailChimp does the newsletters. Um, we use active campaign. There's a million tools to do this and almost everything now can send email um out regularly so don't overthink what you need to do this with um typically what you'll need is pretty straightforward something that can send email so a crm that has email capability and if your crm doesn't have that you need a new crm because uh, that is like a basic requirement of crms ideally it has some form of automation built in again majority have this so that means if someone joins you can have it send out emails. Um, typically, we also recommend something like Zapier. So if you're collecting people's information from like a form on your website, it can auto put that into your CRM. Um, and But that's basically about it is you need something to collect people's contact information, which could be like your website, landing page builder, stuff like that. You need a tool to connect it from one to the other if there isn't already a direct connection. And then that's about it. Um, and if you really want to, you can get results just with like Gmail, Google for business type of thing, um, which on that note, and I just realized I did not include this in the webinar. Please get a branded email address. Don't use gmail.com, hotmail.com, aol.com, any of that stuff. Uh, please do one that's just a specific branded email. They're not that expensive. Um, and just from a even professionalism standpoint, it's valuable um, to use that. So I would highly, highly recommend doing that. And they it's well worth the investment of setting that up. Uh, one thing I wanted to bring up though, because this does come up a lot, is what impacts open rates? And I actually saw it as a theme in some of the replies when you guys registered for this about open rates of like, well, our open rate isn't great. So we might want to look at changing the content. The content 
isn't a huge factor of open rates if they're low from the beginning. Now, if you have like a drip campaign that like the first two or three emails are like 50, 60, 70% open rate, then drops to 20, that means your content sucks. But a lot of the time, it's actually just what you see here. These three main factors that impact open rate. It's the name of who's sending it. I think this is one that a lot of people overlook. So for example, um, we've tested this at Just Sell Homes. When it comes from me, Andrew Foliato is the name. Like if you open up and like the preview there is of our weekly Tuesday newsletter. Even if you go in it, you will see it's not me writing it. Like whoever on our team writes it, signs their name to it. It's not me. My name gets the most open rates. Um, it outperforms if it's someone on our team's name. It outperforms just sell homes. Um, people would rather read from someone they know. And most people who kind of come through the JSH world generally know my name. Um, so that's the most important thing. Coming from a person will outperform. So that's the first thing. Um, the next one, obviously, is the subject line. This does also have a pretty good impact, um, which is pretty straightforward. And there's a couple different like strategies around subject lines. Um, it's just one like straight telling them what's in it. There's kind of the clickbait style. Um, and then there's like the file folder style. Um, but your subject line obviously impacted. And the one that most people overlook is the text preview. This is after the subject line and depends on the mailbox people use, we'll start to show them a preview of the image. So like here on my Gmail, for example, it shows, it just said this, tired of your emails being, because it was after your promo, promo for this webinar. Um, and then on the right, I just pulled a screenshot last night because I thought you should see that on some, it's different. So you can see, and like, this is a screenshot from my phone, team name of the team sending it, their subject line, and it's actually the biggest section that you see on the phone is the start of the email. But you can see if this was over here and I was reading it on desktop, I probably only would have seen this part. But because it's on the phone where there's a larger one, it starts going into the rest of the email and you can see there. And that's something you can control in most email providers. Not all of them is the preview. So like, for example, we use active campaign to just sell homes. I can actually go in and edit what that preview is going to look like. Um, so we will use that as a secondary tool to get people to increase the open rate. So if you want to think about all three of those, and I think where most people make a simple mistake is when they don't put their name. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've seen teams do like team email, admin, help, or random things like that and send that without thinking. Um, and that's where it comes into a how many people on the Zoom webinar to assess the effectiveness of your email to us? Uh, I think we had a few hundred registered. I think right now we got uh, like 70, 80 registered or something like that. Um, yeah. So it's all right. I mean, it's not our most popular webinar. It's also not the most popular topic in the world, but to me, it's one of the most important ones. Um, so for reference, like when we did ChatGPT when it was hot, we had 1,200 registered. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like it's decent for what we're looking for. And for then when we look at the amount that we promoted it, it was a good number. Um, next up the wheelhouse marketing framework. So when we look at the framework and we've talked about some other webinars, if you joined us is how we organize our marketing. So we want to break down what the different email options are within each component. So the first one in the discover phase. So how do people discover you? Obviously from an email perspective, this is not a big part of the wheelhouse framework is email because this is how people find you. you need to have their email typically to get them to find you. So where we talk about how you can leverage email in the discover phase of your marketing is with when you're attracting referrals and to get referrals, um, please stop using, Oh, by the way, I'm never too busy for your referrals. It's not going to work that well. I don't, I don't know that I've ever really met people. Let's say I'm never too busy for your referrals and it drives them a lot of referrals. Um, I'd love to be corrected, um, but this is one of those things that a lot of people use and is really not that effective. Um, if you wanna start getting referrals, you have to start being by being specific about it. So for example, and I'll mention Dean Jackson a few times just email because he's great at email marketing. I've learned a lot from him. He has what he calls a super signature, which is instead of saying, oh, by the way, I'm never too busy referrals, you say, when you're ready, here's how I can help you. And you give them three or four different options. 
Um, the other thing you can do here is switch it and just doing a single thing. Because so I like the super signature that Dean Jackson promotes, and I use it myself quite a bit. But sometimes you just want to do a single call to action. Um, that's the big thing is you want to have a single call to action so you're not confusing them with options. And Sarah has a great point in the chat, which is people knew how good email marketing, how good email marketing converts would be more people here. And yes, you own it. So like a big thing, you don't own Instagram. So what we refer to email as is this is your owned audience. Social media is your rented audience. And I can't tell you how many times that we have agents who reject us because they see us as the social media experts because they've been kicked off Facebook or they've lost their account and they haven't been able to get it back. Like we had one woman I actually worked with for over a year trying to get her account back with Facebook and never ended up getting it back after over a year of back and forth with them. And we never even got a reason why. Um, and like, as far as we know, there's never any violations. Like I, for example, fairly regularly am not allowed to post in my own groups even when I'm not posting there, because I say I'm violating community standards, I haven't even been posting. Like there's something weird. Maybe I'm connected to an account that does violate because that can happen sometimes. Um, but you never know when you lose access to a social audience. Emails, the worst case is you can export the list and just go to a different platform because you own it. You need to own your list and that's where you should be driving people to. But what to get referrals, you have to be specific with your ask. And we'll show you some ways to do that, but don't just think of this as, oh, by the way, we have to see referrals with the Buffini stickers. Um, you want to be specific and tell them what the next steps are. So even if you want referrals, be like, do you know someone thinking of moving? Reply to this email, let me know the details, and we can set up a time to help them out. Or just forward this email to the person that you think needs help or send me their contact information. However you want to get the referral, tell them exactly how to get it. And again, not a ton in the discover phone where we're getting into is the rest of it. So the next phase is conversations. And the big thing with conversations in your marketing is, and I've talked about this before in other webinars, is these conversations don't always have to be with you. Sometimes you want conversations to be about you. And you think that's a weird image. It's because I literally typed water cooler content into um, an AI and I was curious what would come out and I put it in there. Um, you guys can play a fun game if you want of how many images in this presentation were random AI images that I put in because I thought that it'd be funny. Um, I don't think you'll be able to figure out all of them. Um, but so water cooler content when it comes to email is email so interesting that they would talk about it around the water cooler with people. Um, like there's some great examples of this around like house hacks. Like if anyone here uses TikTok or I guess if you use uh instagram reels a week later um the content that like gets really popular on houses like house hacks like did you know you could do this like there's one that went viral like a year or two ago where someone's like did you know you could just lift up your like the oven with the coils burners you could just lift it up to clean underneath how many people had no clue that was a thing and then they talked about it with everyone else like you could put a tip like that in your email of like here's some little hacks around your house to help you manage it better. It's house related. It's tips related. Those are things they're going to talk about because when they go to talk about it, they'll be like, yeah, my real estate agent sent me this email about this tip around the house. Um, and there's a ton of little tips like that, that people would have no idea about. Like another one, it's not really house related that I find is like, if you look at a gas, look at the gas on your car, you know, where the symbol is with the little gas tank and there's an arrow next to it. How many people have no idea that arrow points to the side of the car where you put the gas in? Like it's such a little thing that it's amazing. How many people have no idea that's a thing? Like I was in my 20s before I found out that that arrow points to the side of your car. So there was no like, which, which part of this is? Tips like that get people talking and get people talking to you. And it's, if you can get people talking to you, they're going to want to start look, getting your content too. The other type of conversational email we really like is what we call conversational email. Uh, that is the thinking of you, which is once in a while, and this you don't want to send too often. So for me, I look at it, if someone's in your database and they're kind of either solid prospects or past clients, so this is not something you send to random leads. This is specifically a database um, of A plus prospect, people you're actively working with and past clients. 
is just a was thinking about I saw this and thought of you. So the example I often use here is like I really like mountain biking. If I had an agent here, I would and they sent me an email that was like, "Hey, I saw a new mountain bike track opened up. Here's the link to the article about it. Saw it and thought of you. Send the email." That's a really effective email to do to build a relationship and keep it going because it shows them that you think of them as more than just a transaction, which is what a lot of people want. It's a very low effort thing to do. So what I always recommend is like, as you're working with people, as you're getting to know them, make notes in your CRM about their interests. So even if they mention something just in passing, mention to that you, okay, here is this thing. Here is this, you heard about this and did that. And this could be like, oh, I haven't sent anything to this person in a while. Look up the interest that you remember they have, whether you've written it down, it's in your head. Go Google what's new in that world and go. Um, do you, have you addressed email platform CRMs to use that include the necessary option and subscribe? Do we need to be with MailChimp or HubSpot? Um, basically, every platform now has that ability that like it, just pick one that works. As I did talk about it a bit, but basically pick the platform uh, that you're comfortable using. Almost all like the major ones have the options to be compliant. Um, I wouldn't, it's not something I typically worry too much about it. I mean, MailChimp is probably the easiest for all that, but um, some of your email marketing you can do through Google, but for like regular newsletter send, do not send it through Google, uh, which we can address at the end if we have extra time. And then other side of conversational or what we call teaser emails. And I like these because they get conversations going. So, and they feel less promotional. So what we'll sometimes do, especially if like it's someone who's been quiet for a while, if they've reached out about a listing to be like, Hey, John, we have a four bedroom coming to the market in the Glenway neighborhood. Want me to flip you over the details. We're specifically not sending them the regular email, like the contact in, in, or the details about this specific listing. We're purposely saying, we have this listing coming up. Do you want it? Because now they have to respond and tell us that they're interested. That's what we want to get from them. We want them to say that mm -hmm. you are interested in this. I want to get it. And then it's also nice because, again, it feels more personal to the personal to the person getting it. Because it's like, hey, I saw this thought of you. Would you like the details on it? Otherwise, I won't bother you with them. Very simple strategy to do. And the goal here is, again, get conversations going, get people talking. And a lot of your emails, this is the stuff you do through Google. We get to newsletters, and I'll explain when we get to newsletters, don't go through Google. But for a lot of your emails, you're sending out focus on replies. I've seen a lot of agents who their main focus on is like, I want you to pick up the phone and call me. I want you to go here. I want you to go do this. I want you to take all these extra steps. A lot, the majority of your marketing emails to databases, to past clients is, can I get them to reply, even if it's short, and have a start of a conversation? Now, if these replies, they're replying quickly and en masse, then you'd be like, you know, do you want to just, we can keep this going over email if you like, but it might be quicker to do this over the phone. Then you jump on the phone, continue building the relationship. But if they're responding to emails regularly, keep it going on email for a long time. And your goal here with a lot of people is just to have short, simple conversations somewhat regularly with people that's a really easy thing to manage. Now, we can't talk about email marketing. We're not going to talk about how you get them to join your list. So this one, make them feel special if they're on their list. So what you want to think about is how could I make it so the emails I'm asking them to get feels like they've been let behind the red velvet rope, right? So this could be as simple as these homes aren't, we have, we show you homes before they hit the market. Um, it could be about exclusive events coming up. Like there's a ton of options for this, but basically the idea, and it could just be, we're going to give you exclusive tips that you can't get anywhere else. But the idea here is, can you make them feel that if they join your email list, they're going to be in the VIP club. Like this is the group that they need to be a part of to be able to get it. It's going to be one of the most effective things you can do. I highly recommend it. Um, and there's just, you can do a million different ways with this topic. But if you want them to join your list, you need to give them a reason. That reason can't be join my newsletter, right? Like if you say like, I, how many times I've seen this on people's websites, put your email in to join our newsletter. Why should I join your newsletter? What's in it for me? What am I going to learn from it? Most of the time it just says join my newsletter. 
And that's a benefit for you, not for them. So like one of the examples with like REM, which we obviously try to get people to join our newsletter on that quite frequently. One of the effective messaging is, you know, become one of the smartest agents in your office three times in five minutes, three times a week about what's going on in the industry or join the join other industry leaders on the list. It's not just join our newsletter or get our newsletter. It's here's why you should get it. Here's the benefit to you for having it. But think about what's special. And we're looking at even for that, adding some ways in that this is going to be the only place they will get certain information. Like, for example, we did a survey in the REM newsletter. The only thing in there, the only way to get the results and participate in the survey was to be on the list. So it helped people want to be on it. This is one that I really like to get people to join your list and I think more people should do. Um, if you've been on other webinars, I have talked about this. It's what we call the listing update system. So when you have a listing, force registration, great way to get leads, also a great great way to have people upset with you because they had to become, they had to give you their contact information. So we flip the reason that they're registering and we say register for updates on this property. And then you email them updates about the property as it happens so we start this in the coming soon and i think now most of you are in canada um so starting in january that coming soon email type of stuff has it's a three-day window so it does shorten that quite a bit um but basically what you can do is say we have this listing i'm currently getting it ready for sale photographers are here right now if you want to get a copy of the photos and the price when we go to market and a link to the listing when it goes live register for updates right here and we'll email you updates about this property. Then you email them updates throughout the life of the listing, including the sold price at the end. And you're gonna tell them up front they're gonna get the sold price. And then once you send that, now you send a couple emails pitching them on getting notified of other listings. If you have a new listing coming out soon that's similar to one they registered for in the past, email that past list and be like, you've asked for updates on a similar listing. We have one coming up. Would you like updates on that one? Again, getting the reply, getting the conversations going. You want to have a lot of conversations with people. Email is a great way to do it. It's similar to like the reason Instagram stories are so valuable from a conversion standpoint is they're private conversations. Email, even more private, super valuable for that end. Again, email, one of the most effective conversion tools. Other ways to get people to join your list is just simple value-based lead magnets. And that could be as simple as a free home eval home prep guides, list of homes, like the daily emails that get sent out from MLS, that can be considered a form of lead magnet because it would attract people to give you their contact info. But you need to give them something in exchange. Join my newsletter isn't enough to give them. And then you just need a simple landing page. So like, yes, on your website, you can have different things to collect email addresses, but you want to have a simple landing page somewhere. Most website providers that you have can either build this or you can use a tool like lead pages. That's what I use for this one here. Um, a very simple landing page like this one converts 60% of the traffic that comes to this page, give us their contact information. Um, we just have a new one launching that should that we just recently launched. I haven't checked the stats yet, but the initial numbers were looking good um, to be even higher than that. But a simple landing page that gets the minimum information needed. And I think people overestimate how everyone that comes in has to give name, email, and phone number. When you can look at it as like a journey that they're on, or maybe if we first get their email, build trust and then ask for their phone number. You don't have to go right out the gate to get someone's phone number. Build trust with them. They will give you their phone number when they're ready. For some ad types, yes, go for the phone number right away. But like for others, you don't always need it right off the gate. You can build your trust with them over email, then get the phone number. Now, the convert stage is by far the biggest stage here. This is where the majority of the email work comes into play. It's your best tool in your conversion with the exception of literally picking up the phone. <laughs> um, but when we're thinking about email marketing, you have to think about the stages people are at. And to oversimplify the stages, there's three. Fast lane, medium lane, slow lane. Fast lane, pretty straightforward. These are the people who are ready to go. And they, so they're like, yep, let's start. Let's go. I'm ready. Let's sign up. I'm good to go. Let's move. 
ideal situation. Majority of people are not in the fast lane. But when you're thinking about your emails, you need something in every email for everyone who's new that has an option that either directly leads to it or will quickly lead to it to identify the fast lane people and give them an option to skip the line. Because some people will look at these long drips that like on the seventh day is when some, they finally ask for the business because they're like, give, 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 and then ask. Well, you want to have an option essentially to skip that lane or skip that line, go straight to the fast lane. That could be a simple one-off line. Be like, do you want to jump on the phone quickly and talk about it? Click here. Otherwise, here's the information you need. But think of in your initial follow-ups, do you have a fast lane option for those who are ready to go now? And then there's the medium lane. These are the people who are six months, 12 months out, but they're planning to move relatively soon. You need to stay in touch with them, but it's not that you got to like jump on it and hammer it right away because there's you have time, but you still want to think about, I still got to move them in a very specific direction. And there's the slow lane, which is there's no timeline. This could be two years. It could be 10 years. They could say 10 years and move tomorrow, but... We don't have a defined timeline. They're just kind of cruising along in the far right side in their own little world, but they're still there. That slow lane is the majority of the people that are going to join your list. And what you want to do is systems in place to get people regular content that can help with them. So with your initial lead response, you do your goal is to get a reply. Um, a lot of initial lead responses, again, are they, they over touch on the idea of provide them value, provide them value, provide them value. When for that initial lead response, sometimes all we want to do is get a reply. So like if someone inquires about a listing, the example I often use is, hi, this is Andrew from Just Sell Homes. Uh, we saw you inquired about 123 Main Street. Are you looking at it for yourself or as an investment? Just trying to get a reply. Um, only send emails on days you want to make money. Um, send emails every day. Basically what it means. If you want to like emails, grow your business, the more you send, the more it can help assuming you're doing it well. Uh, but don't stop sending emails. And these could, doesn't mean a newsletter every day. It just means email. Um, but your initial lead response again is just about often getting replies from people. And you really want to focus on getting those replies as much as possible. So push in a way where you want that reply from them, identify the lane that you're going to put them in and go send emails every day to entire database. No, you don't want to necessarily send it every day to your entire database, but it might be this day I'm going to send a segmented email over here. This day, maybe it's five to 10 individual emails, but every day you should be sending emails out to people that is separate from like the emails you have to do to run your business. Now you can send them every day to your list, but your list will have a higher churn rate. So you need to be really confident that you can keep adding more people to it. Um, and now in your initial lead response, what we like to do is repeat a double dip offer. If you've been on some of our lead gen seminars, you'll hear me talk about these. Um, again, I named them because I'm a Seinfeld fan. The idea being someone opts in to be a lead. Most contact forms just say, thanks, we'll be in touch when you should be offering them the next step. So if someone opts in, it goes to then like say opts in about a listing. Maybe then you redirect them to the form and says, great, we'll send you the details about that listing. Do you need to sell your current home to buy this? Click here, send us details about your home. And we'll tell you what your current home would sell for to help you plan better. Well, emails can repeat these double dip offers. Just because they inquired about one thing doesn't mean you can't use it as an opportunity to learn about other things as well. Use the opportunity in your emails to do the double dip and learn more about them. Um, there's also, and these are huge in our industry because most CRMs like have built-in ones, pre-built long-term drips. So these would be like, you know, one person opts in today, their 12 to 24 to 36 month of emails starts and just goes. And then if someone jumps in for three months from now, they're just going to be three months behind in that same sequence. Um, these work if you don't have anything else. Um, I'm personally not a big fan of them. And what I find is they don't work as well as what we're going to show you in terms of newsletter strategies. These work again, if you don't have anything and you need something on autopilot, cause you can't commit to sending like original content. Um, again, better than nothing, 
But like one of the problems with pre-built long-term drips is relevant to what's going on, either time them there where they are now or anything like that is important with emails. You want to deliver the right stuff at the right time. And if my drip campaign starts today, three months from now, someone opts in, it starts for them. You can't make it relevant at the right time as easily because you don't know. And like, so even if you were doing that and you had one in like seven ways to winterize your home, you, that could end up going to them in the middle of summer or in the middle of winter when it's too late. Like there's, you don't necessarily control how that goes in. So you have to make the content more generic. Uh, the more generic that content is, the less effective it becomes. It doesn't mean it's bad content, but it's not as good as could be. Um, the only like long-term drips that are kind of like this that I'm okay with um, generally is just start sending them listings. Like the automated ones. If you're going to send them automated ones all the time anyways, send them the automated listing ones. Now, newsletters. <laughs> I thought this joke was clever. Um, newsletters, you have to keep them regular. You got to send them as much as you want. I don't know if anyone will get the reference on screen there. Uh, you want to keep your newsletters regular as possible. My preferred cadence is weekly. Um, a lot of agents send them monthly from their CRM. Uh, we at Just Sell Home started our, we originally did a monthly newsletter. One of them, one of the problems with that is let's say hypothetically send out your newsletter this morning. Thursday morning, lead ops in now, they get their initial drip campaign, they don't respond, they don't hear from you for a month. You want regular, fresh content coming at an interval that keeps them with you top of mind without overdoing and annoying them. So we really like weekly. Just at homes, we started monthly. Then I moved to bi-weekly because even I wasn't sold on the weekly one. We moved to bi-weekly, results improved a little bit. Finally moved to weekly, one of the best decisions we ever made for the business. Like, can't tell you how good it's been for us to switch to weekly, the replies we get, the engagement we get. When we do it for clients, if they stick to it, the results are there. Like weekly emails is an awesome cadence. If you're going to do more than weekly, and like I know people who send four or five newsletters a week, it, there's value to that. But you have to be very upfront but that's what you're doing when they sign up. So like for me, if I was to take, say, Just Sell Homes newsletter that right now is once a week, if I was going to change that to five days a week, you have to look at it. And Shane, I, I see your comment about struggling with having content on a weekly basis. I'm going to show you how, that's what's coming up like right away, is we're going to show you how you can do that with a regular weekly cadence without stretching yourself and struggling with that by making it simple. Um, and there's a couple different routes you can go with this to make your life easier. And there's pros and cons to each, which we'll go through. But I can't stress enough how valuable a weekly one is. You can do daily, like um, Chuck and Melissa Charlton and Mil Milton, they do Milton Daily Homes, which is five days a week. Incredible value there. Great thing for their business. It's a big commitment though. But when people sign up, they know they're signing up for a daily email. So I'm not a fan of get someone's email and auto add them to a five day a week style email. I'm okay with it from a once a week standpoint, because it's actually not that much in their inbox, even though it sounds like a lot. Um, isn't weekly too much for the recipient? No, uh, it's the right amount. Once a month is not enough. Um, but most of the reason that once a month or like once a week seems like a lot because most seems like one aren't actually that valuable, right? Like they're not ones that people care to get. Um, it's generic content that people don't find that value. So the way you want to do it, and so I'll give you an example like this one, is what one of the styles you can do once a week is what we call a link roundup. Uh, we typically make these community focused. So like this is just a campaign that we had from us to agents. We found like here's content we thought you guys would find valuable but it's basically here's a sentence a link we found interesting if we were doing this for you as an agent the way we would approach that is say okay what's going on like i live in new market the first section would be new market news then it might be we feature a local business then we might do here's you know things going on this weekend in new market that you might want to check out 
And then we're going to have a real estate section in there. So it might be a new market update. Could be here's some new listings coming on the market. But what we're doing here is acting a little bit like a reporter is here's what's going on in the community. That community can either be a geographic or demographic. So some people work wider geographic areas, but they work with a specific demographic. You then make it demographic focused instead of geographic focused. That's up to you. But basically the idea is find content that doesn't even have to be yours. It can be from other people and share it with one or two lines in a sentence to read more. There's a lot more than kind of go into testing different things here, but it's a super simple one. What I like about this style is anyone can do it. And I truly mean anyone. Like if you have an admin, you can train them in a few days how to do this every week because you just got to find interesting content, send it out, find interesting content, send it, just keep doing that over and over again. But again, it's not always real estate. It's for people in the community. And then you put some real estate content into it. Um, one that at Just a Homes we found has worked well, and we've also used this for some of our clients, is what we mm -hmm. often end it with is what we call the puppy of the week. Um, this is just something that makes people smile at the end of our email. So worst case, even if you hated our email that week, you still smiled at the end because everyone smiles when they see a baby animal. Um, we've tested things like feel good news. Um, there's been hits and misses on that, but consistently the ending the email with the puppy of the week slash baby animal of the week just consistently is one of those things like we hear about it all the time. Uh, what is the normal unsubscribe rate on an email blast? You ideally are under 0.5% per email. Um, the first little while that you do it, you're going to see more. Don't worry about unsubscribes um, unless it's a huge number. Like your unsubscribes over 5% ongoing. It happens. Um, not a huge deal. Um, but you're going to see a bit of an unsubscribe jump at the beginning. That doesn't mean they don't like you. It just means that they're cleaning up their inbox. Um, will we sometimes even run ads to people who unsubscribed? Um, because they, it's a, the highest source of people resubscribing is they like sometimes they even just do it by accident or they realize they want to get the content again. Um, but I don't ever, don't ever take it personally. You know, this, I, that I used to do that at the beginning, I would take it personally if people unsubscribe. Then I realized, wait, I unsubscribe from people I like hearing from all the time, I was just cleaning up my inbox. Um, and your goal is to make your email one of those ones that they don't want to unsubscribe from. Now, the easiest one for most of you to send out is the house of the week, deal of the week. Um, you can either do it as a house of the week, crush of the week, favorite house this week, or a deal of the week, favorite investment property. It doesn't matter like what the angle you take is it, but basically once a week, you're going to send your favorite house that came on the market that week. The key to this email, and these can be short, is why you think it is. Okay. Anyone can send a listing out. What you want to add here is your insight into why this listing. This is also one that you could send as a five day a week email. If you're in an area that gets enough new listings that every day you could send out our favorite house that came on the market in the last 24 hours, but a once a week, here's the deal of the week. Here's the investment of the week. Here's our loft of the week. Take an angle and run with it every week. But this only works well long-term if you include why it is and what you think about it, because they're coming for your insight. The more unusual it is, um, need to get listing agent permission to do that. I don't, this could vary area to area. So you'd want to double check with your broker. Um, because you're emailing it to people subscribed, it shouldn't be any different than um, emailing like listings off the MLS because you're just sending it to them in a different way. Um, if you started posting on social, that can be different where you need permission to advertise. But because this is going to like essentially your database, I believe in most regions, it's okay. But again, different regulators across Canada are very different and in the US too. Um, so just take that into consideration. You might want to double check with your broker. Um, but I know in most places it works. The other option, and this one I'm also a big fan of, is once a week, you send out the sold prices. And this is basically being a, again, depending on the volume of the area you're covering, you might do all of them or you might highlight a few. You'd be like, here's what's sold in the neighborhood in the last week. Here's what's sold. Um, and again, the most important part of this is your insight as to why it sold for that price. It's not enough just to give them the information you want to do a couple of lines 
about why it sold for that. So you're offering expertise. So like going back to water cooler content, this can even count a little bit as water cooler content because maybe now when they're hanging around the water cooler at work or the Slack version of a water cooler, they're going to say things like, oh, yeah, I actually just saw, because you know, people are talking about, they're like, you know, my agent just sent me an email talking about that sold listing. And here's why it sold for that. Or it set a new benchmark, like make them the smart person in the conversation by having read what you're doing. Um, so continually think about that angle of, I'm going to make the person reading this the smartest person in whatever room they're going into about the topic I'm doing. So don't just share the information, share your insight on it. So with the deal of the week, with the sold of the week, this is one that's harder to outsource. So like, it's a lot harder for your admin to do this because this is coming from you. Now, typically, once you get into the habit of doing this, if you do it well, um, it's not something that would take you more than like 30 minutes, 30 to 60 minutes to do, because you're going to create a template and you're going to be looking at listings anyways. Like, yes, I like this one. Sub it in. And these don't need to be more than a paragraph or two and you do it. Why well, I have to keep proving my expertise isn't having a government registration sufficient proof of that. Uh, nope. Because right now, let's take Ontario, for example, there is 96,000 realtors. I think I even heard recently it works out to like one of every 77 people's a realtor. Um, you have to also show them not just that you're an expert, but you have to show them why you're better than all the other experts out there with their registration too. You have to keep going with it. Um, and if you ever go to like reddit or twitter or any of those places where people talk about realtors they're not always the biggest fans um like twitter is big on saying that our industry is glorified door openers and it sometimes takes everything i have not to respond and rip them a new one but that's a whole other topic for another day um the other type of email you can send is what we call a storytelling email once a week so this is like you tell a story include a call to action um so this would be like I'm going to tell a story about something that happened in the last week that has a lesson in it for you. And then I'm going to do a call to action tied to that, that lesson. I personally don't love these ones. Um, they do work really well for some people and some audiences. Um, like I like telling stories. I use stories in a lot of my marketing. I just find that this is a really want, hard one to do well and being authentic and not coming across as I'm trying to force stories into selling people. Um, so I think it's a really hard one to do well for a lot of people. If you can do this one well, it is one of the more powerful ways to send email marketing. And I know people who have grown really good businesses with this, um, but it is tough. Hey, what can you get for maximum of X and location has worked well for me because people have no idea how much things cost and they can get for their money. Yeah. Like, Anything that gives them knowledge they wouldn't have otherwise had works incredibly well. Um, but basically the idea is this is the best place to get it. Like that's why I love sold. Like the fact that the industry, like for the most part in most areas suppresses sold information is one of the best things you can do with your email marketing because it's a reason they have to opt in to get it. That's not even your fault. Like you're like, I would love to share this with you. I am not allowed by people to do this but I'm going to let you in on the insiders club we have here. Right. So now it's like the industry suppression of sold prices gives you a marketing tool that you can leverage and use to your advantage. Um, then once in a while, you still got to get leads off these. So you send out your regular emails and within once in a while, you add in some calls to action. Now, if I was sending out and I, there's even one that I at just at homes need to do better myself. Um, is once in a while you send out an email that is a lead getting email. And this could be as simple as outside of your regular weekly cadence and you don't want to overdo these types of emails. Hey, simple one design to get people to put up their hand because they're thinking of moving. And this could be as simple as, are you planning to move? Like what I would do right now, if I were you, the like lead getting one I would do today, just given the time of the year, be like, Fall and winter is coming. If you're planning to sell your home before, let's say like May, you want to get someone out to your house now to take photos of it. So you have 
good like good weather photos of your backyard because that will help you sell if you plan to sell before the spring. I'm happy to send my photographer there at no cost if you're planning on selling. So now you're offering them really good value and a reason to put up their hand for selling the next few months. So you want to think about, again, that's a very timely email to send. So if you're watching the replay of this and it's past, what are we, mid-September? If you're watching this in like December, too late, but you can save it for next year. But think of reasons that once in a while you can send out. And it can be as simple as, are you planning to move? Don't you, sometimes you don't have to overthink of it. But once in a while, you're going to add in an email that says, are you interested in working with me? You don't send them out too often. And in your regular weekly emails, you include like softer cells or in like the PS is where you can put it a lot of the time. Um, another great conversion tool is workshops and you can promote it a lot over email. So what I love about workshops, one of the best conversion tools, like a lot of people think of hosting workshops as a lead generation tool. I prefer them as a lead conversion tool. Like I've normally when I used to host them or even when I host them now, so like as a realtor, when I host them, as an agency owner, when I host them, majority of people are who come to them are already in my database. And often it's people who have inquired about our services before, but didn't pull the trigger. And then when they come and they get to know you and they talk with me, then they end up at the end of that day booking in and we get them as clients. And what over email, you're going to send out notices about new workshops. Then you have to have a good email sequence to get them to show up in person. Like we had a client, this is probably seven years ago now, and they were doing a first time home buyer workshop. We set up the, the ads that generated people to register for it. And then they said, we got the rest of it, leave that with us. So we registered, I think 25 people for their in their room. I think technically they had a spot for 24, but we always oversell a little bit just to make sure because you're always gonna have one or two no shows no matter what. Um, so it was on them to do the follow-up to get people from there. 25 registered, zero showed up. So the next one, we helped them work on the follow-up system. So that meant as soon as they signed up, they got a confirmation email that they were being registered. Then they got an email a couple of days later telling them they can invite a friend. They got a reminder email that it was coming up. The day before they got an email saying, can you please confirm your spot? Just in case you can't make it, we can open up your spot for someone else. And we know how much coffee and donuts to have in the room. Uh, so we were, again, giving them reasons that they had to communicate with you. And then we also said, like, send some texts and phone calls in there as well. And that one had an 86% show up rate with the exact same registrations. Um, that follow-up helps you with your conversion. But workshops, incredibly powerful tool. And email is one of the best ways to both promote and make sure that people actually show up to it. And then you do the follow-up because even if people don't necessarily convert in the room, you can restart the conversation after um, as you're going through. And then because I mentioned him all the time, Dean Jackson, um, he has this thing that he's famous for. He calls it his magic trick, uh, which is the amazing nine-word email. I'm just out of curiosity so I can get a show of hands for people here. How many people know what the nine-word email is already? I mention it a lot just because it's one of those things that works. Um, a yes or no in the chat. I'd love to see who knows about what it is already. Doesn't know some. Okay, good. Well, good, good chunky, you know, already. That's good. Use it often. Perfect. Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah, I definitely would have thought you'd know about it. I probably mentioned it at presentations in front of you a bunch of times. Um, so basically the Dean Jackson nine word email is a super simple um, email. And basically all it is like, let's take all your leads who haven't contacted, haven't responded to anything in at least three months. And you send them this email. It's very easy. If they're here in new markets, so I'm a new market. So I'm going to use new market as the example. My subject line is going to be homes in new market. And the email will say, hi, are you still interested in buying a home in new market? That's the entire email. We have tested this because we've had clients who wanted to add in more greetings. So they wanted to add in like, hey, how's it going? Hope your fall's going well. Are you, or hope back to school's going well. Are you still interested in buying a home in area? That had a noticeable drop in replies. So keep it simple. Hi, are you still looking to buy a home in and the area? You make that area as narrow as possible without excluding people from the list that you have. 
Um, the more segmentation, the more specific you can do this. You can also do this on the seller side. Are you still thinking of selling your home? Are you still planning to move? Um, but short, simple emails that expect a reply. Um, if you guys know Justin Conoco in London, there's actually a funny story I was on. Remember when Clubhouse was a thing? Yeah, it was a thing briefly. Um, Justin might be one of the only people still on it. <laughs> um, sorry if you're here, Justin. Uh, <laughs> but I remember it was a good story. So we were on Clubhouse talking and I mentioned the Dean Jackson nine word email on it. And it was a Tuesday morning at like 8 a.m. And he took 1,200 of his old leads and sent them the nine word email that morning. And I love people who take action that quick. It was actually one of the things that made me like Justin right off the bat was he heard something. He's like, I'm going to do that. And he went and did it right away. So he sent it to 1,200 people. He got so many replies and calls booked from that email. He had to call his team into the office to start handling it because he couldn't personally handle all the calls that came out of it. Like the only time we've sent it and it hasn't had replies and conversations started is when it will only send to like 20, 30, 40 people. Anyone who's ever sent it to like a few hundred people have at least gotten a reply. Sometimes those replies are telling you to stop emailing them, but that's still better than nothing. Uh, sometimes it's a frustrating reply where they might say something like, I already sold, I actually just bought like two weeks ago. You don't like hearing that because they didn't use you, but it's an incredible one that gets people talking to you again. Now, the next phase of the wheelhouse is trust. So one here that's really important is client communication. Um, every email you send a client is a marketing email. You're building your trust with them. You're giving them good service because if your client is going to refer you they're putting their name on the line for you, right? So they want to be confident that the person they send your way is going to be happy with every step of the service. So they have to know the emails they're getting, the communication you're giving them is going to be top notch. So put the thought into like, what are these emails are getting? When are they getting them? How is this presented to them? Would this be something that would make them proud to send their friends and family to get go through that same process? And even if you think your email is good, there's always opportunities to do it better and more communicative to them. So think about how you can improve your marketing by sending them through different things like this. Um, so look at every email you send, when you send it, how can I make this better? When I'm keeping in mind, I'm trying to make them want to send their friends to experience the same level of service. And because email is something that happens a lot, make sure you include this in. Content distribution, another great way to do it. You create content, you got to promote it. Um, the nine word email frequency, should it be once per quarter? Roughly, yeah, I would typically do that. I mean, it also depends on like lead volume. Um, like if you're only getting 10 leads a month, as an example, you probably are going to do it maybe every six months. I mean, I think, and I'm, Richard, you can correct me. I think you actually get a pretty decent number of leads. I feel like we've talked about this in the past, like in the hundreds a month. Um, for that frequency, I'd probably be looking at every three months, um, but also judge the results. Like if you start, you start doing that and it starts going down, um, the amount of like replies, maybe you would then want to stretch it out a little bit. But yeah, so for you, I'd probably say, once per quarter to start, um, try it out. And then you can kind of gauge results because what you can also start doing is maybe do once per quarter, but do different segments. Maybe it's like once per quarter leads from this campaign, the next quarter leads from this campaign and do it that way. Um, but switch it up and test it out. Um, there's never a single right answer to something like that. Um, you get content though, you have to promote it. Uh, email's a great way to do that. And I can show you an example here that you see on the screen. Um, we just put together a list of all the options people have with the rise in interest rate and an impact on your mortgage payments. If it's of interest, and I clearly spelled apparently ILF. All right, uh, let's go with that. Um, if it's of interest, you can read it here. Simple email puts it out there. You have to promote content that you make to get people to read it. Not promoting content you make is like taking a listing and not putting an MLS. You have to promote it and get in front of people. You have to give people a way to see it. Email is one of the best way to do that. Um, Google reviews, ask for them. Like when someone, and I generally tend to think of like, when are they happiest with you in the process? That's when you send them. So I would typically 
go after a firm deal and before closing um because that's the best time to do it you don't want to do it during conditional because they're busy getting the conditions done they're happiest when they got the firm deal because now it's like new and exciting and yay this is great because if you're doing it like while they're packing or just after they moved in they're stressed because of all the packing and all this stuff and yes it's happy but they're also just kind of like I need to relax for a minute. This was a very stressful section. But that firm moment is when they're the happiest. And that's when you ask for your Google review. Um, send that email out to them. If you haven't ever asked for Google reviews, you want to get some from your clients. Um, a big one that I like to do, um, and we've helped clients send this one out. And I recommend actually doing this and like pick someone in your office to do it with. And if you're on a team, another great way to do it is you have this sent from multiple team members being like, Hey, uh, I was wondering if you could help me out. Um, we're having a competition in my office to see who can get the most Google reviews. And I would actually do like a punishment for the loser. It could be like, you know, whoever loses has to take an ice bath or do something. And it could be good social content. Um, could you help me win? Like when I used to work, um, I used to work at Remax head office for those who remember me from like nine years ago. Um, this is how we used to get reviews at the end of all our sessions is there was a woman I worked with who I'm actually just starting to work with again, Kieran Gandhi. Um, after end of her sessions, we'd be like, I'm trying to beat Kieran to see who can get the best rating out of five. Cause that was how we were graded was out of five. Could you go and help me beat her? And we turned it into a competition with each other and that made people want to do it. Um, or we'd also say things like um, these help me not get fired. So if you think I did a good job and you want me to not get fired, do that and you make a little bit of a fun game out of it. Um, but things like that, they work really well when you add a little bit of fun and reasoning behind why they're giving you the review. And just one of those things, it works really well. Um, and you, these help your SEO, they help a lot, but keep asking for them, make it easy, include the link to where to go to leave it. Um, super simple. Now they're in your database, got to earn their long-term loyalty. And I'll try and go through these quick because we only got three minutes left. Um, Annual CMA. So on the anniversary of every time someone purchases, send them an updated CMA. So if they bought a year ago, here's how your house value has changed over the last year. And here's your options now. Obviously, if their house value has gone down, it's not always a fun email. But if you're going to be their trusted advisor, you still got to be honest with them. So be like, here's what your home is worth now. Here's your options. Um, then you can also do things like going forward and you think about the fact that how many people is either their variable rate payments have gone up a lot or they have a fixed rate that's about to go up a lot you'd be like you know here's your payment by the way i know that you know because since you bought four years ago you have about a year left probably before your interest rate goes up unless you've done anything in the meantime if you want to start the conversation now about what your options are because your payment could go up by x amount easily just hit reply and we can start talking through your options because if you haven't already started having them with some past clients, those conversations are going to be coming. And if you can help them get prepared for it ahead of when it's a problem problem, that's going to really cement you as the right person in this. So that's also something to think about there is use like a CMA from like a past purchase as an option for doing this. Um, my CT at the bottom of the email is something like thinking of buying or selling, interview me for the job, call or text me direct at number, reply to this email. Um, I would, you can also do both. So you can just be like, you can either call me or book a call right here on my Calendly. Um, I would also test out, and this is just something for you to test and see. Um, be like thinking of selling, click here and we can let you know what your home would sell for, right? So you're starting it in another way. Um, test it out, see what gets more replies, more clicks. I like to use Calendly. Sometimes I give them specific options and at the end be like, not sure what the best next steps for you are. Click here to book a 15 minute introductory call and we'll go over your current situation and what the best steps for you are. And then like, we include that as like a extra option in case they aren't sure what to do. But Calendly is awesome. And then client appreciation events. I recommend doing four of these a year. And this is at least four emails you can send out that are good value to people without being annoying every year. So you can send out the invite, second invite as a reminder, and then the actual reminder for the event and then the follow-up thank you. Um, so four of these a year, super effective. Uh, big fan of sending these out as much as possible. Uh, do the end four reminders. Email's a great way to do it. And just uh, you can ask them to invite friends, things like that, just by forwarding the email. Keep it nice and simple. At the end of the day, 
I put a nice bow on it and I thought, hey, I'll just, I didn't know what to put on the slides. I was like, I'll put something with a bow. Um, start thinking about how you can send emails that show that you're un your unique expertise. Things like um, generic emails that anyone could send are not going to win you like true long-term loyalty from people. The people who are already loyal to you and you're just staying a little bit top of mind, those like pre-written ones from your CRM that everybody sends out are better than nothing. But especially when we're thinking about like leads coming through that don't necessarily trust you yet, it's you have to send them things that would be like, okay, now this is the person that I want to have my back here. Um, so think about what does that look like? And short, sweet emails, get replies from people and it's going to work really well. I'm going to try Calendly and the not sure your next step is the fleet into Calendly. Never tried Calendly before, but the free version has enough features for now. Yeah, I pay for Calendly now because like I found it's paid for itself time and time again. Um, how is your conversion rate from these seminars? It actually is very dependent on the actual um, pitch I give at the end, which service I'm pitching and the topic of the webinar. Surprisingly, and I didn't expect this, the chat GPT webinar we did this year was the highest converting seminar we ever did. I actually thought that one would be the lowest converting and it was our highest. Um, but for us too, online seminars don't nearly convert as well as in person. But if you want more people to email, that's something that we can help you with. Um, we can help you get more people into your database so that you can follow up with them more. If you want to book a call with me to do it, this goes next time to my Calendly, where you can book a call, bookandrew.ca, that forwards to it. Um, and the book Andrew is a good tip here. If you have a hard to spell name like Foliato that has a silent G, don't send someone to calendly.com slash Andrew Foliato because they will never spell it correctly. Um, so I bought bookandrew.ca and it just forwards there. Plus it's easier to remember. So simple short dorm domains that people can remember, you can send them places like that. Um, this is what I really like domain names for. But again, if you want help with your marketing, um, book a sales call with me and we'll, we'll chat about how we can help you get more people to email and I can start boosting you up. Cause at the end of the day, most of the business you get is going to come from the people you email. Now your database being the most valuable, but eventually you have to grow that database. That's where we can definitely come in and help you out a lot. So again, if you have any questions, please reach out. Um, I know we're kind of right there at the end of time so if you guys have i'm happy to stick around and answer questions but otherwise we can wrap it up i will create this as a youtube video and we will send that out to all of you shortly so i just gotta obviously process the video put it up there and we will be good to go um, but anyways i appreciate you guys spending time with us today as always uh, we'll have another one coming up next month um, I believe next month we're going to do it slightly differently, but it's going to be on the topic of marketing your listings. Um, so I really appreciate it. And again, uh, I know I have a call shortly with someone who I've even seen is here in the chat. <laughs> so, uh, Nicole, I will talk to you shortly <laughs> if you're still on the call here, but appreciate you guys joining the, uh, call here today and we'll see you guys next week. And please reach out if I can help you in any way. See you everyone.